So my name's Maisie. Um, I'm an artist and a four-edge painter. I've been doing four-edge painting for nearly a year now. Coming up to it in about a week will be my one-year mark since I did my first four-edge painting. Um, I've always been interested in art since I was very young. I did art GCSE, art A-level. I also did an art foundation and, and then I went on to do history of art at the University of Bristol. Um, in, over the last sort of five or six years, I've mostly been interested in landscape painting, specifically in oil. Um, while I was doing my history of art degree, uh, I studied a lot of um, medieval Christian art. And so I've always been aware of four edge painting existing for quite a while. Uh, some examples I saw during my degree was most, were mostly uh, Victorian period examples on things like Bibles. Now four edge painting goes back to about the medieval period. Uh, we know that it's existed since at least the 10th century and there are uh, examples surviving from as early as the 13th century. Uh, it was often a way to make books more expensive and more decorative and also to make books more unique, especially on things like family Bibles that would be passed down generations. Uh, due to many reasons such as mass production and the need for items to be cheaper and a lot more accessible on demand, um, it's now a critically endangered craft and the standards as per the standards of the Heritage Craft Association with only sort of a handful of professionals working full time on four edge painting. Uh, the craft is essentially painting on the paper edge of a book. So I've got a book here that I've done. Um, that's the side that goes opposite the binding. So the binding is on this side and it's on the edge that can still that opens. Um, it can be a scene that's relevant to the book or it can just be a decorative pattern. Um, during lockdown, like most people, I had downloaded TikTok while trying to get through some really boring night shifts when I worked in healthcare. Um, and I'd seen someone doing something similar. Her name's Brie Marie Paints, and she's, she's amazing. She was doing something similar on uh, Pride and Prejudice. Um, and I'd scrolled through her page and she'd done a lot of classics. And she'd done a type of four edge painting, which is called hidden four edge painting, where um, you gild the edge of the book. And then when you, then you paint the edge, like when it's tilted, and then when you close the book, all you can see is gold. And then when you tilt it, just like you did when you painted it, then reveals the image. So it's hidden when it's shut. Um, now I had, had been in a real like stump with my own art because I, I just couldn't think of where I wanted to go with it. And I sort of had a, an artist's block, but I decided I was going to try something similar. So I tried it on something that I've, a book that I've always loved since I was really small, since my dad read it to me when I was a child. And I tried it on The Hobbit. And then I posted it on TikTok just mostly for my like couple of followers um, and my mum. And, um, and then I went to work the next morning and looked at my phone and my, it had like 400,000 views, which I did not expect. And since then I've carried it on from there and continued posting my content. And since then I've worked for companies like Amazon Prime and uh, um, I'm gonna work with Sony next year. And uh, yeah, I've got lots of exciting projects in the future. So. What I really love about it is that I can tie it into my other interests. So I really like, I'm a massive nerd when it comes to things like Lord of the Rings and Harry Potter. So I can, uh, you know, I can think of scenes and, and ideas to, to pay, and that means I get to watch the films and it's technically work. Um, and also I like posting it online because then you get to engage with lots of other fans and people who have similar interests to you. And I've made so many friends um, and I've been on like podcasts, uh, like Tolkien related podcasts since then because I've been posting my work online and the thing that I really enjoy about it because I have ADHD uh, I find it really hard to just sit down and relax and focus on something but because it's something I really enjoy uh, it's it's a really good opportunity to sit down and get some peace and just focus on painting for a bit uh, and not have to think about anything else so I have so many more ambitious pieces that I want to produce um, I like like doing them on whole series so that they're across the whole thing and when you take it off it's part of the image and um, I've done a couple of them before and they're very time consuming and I'd like to work with some more film companies and really hoping to work with Amazon Prime's new Rings of Power series that's coming up but yeah and maybe do some more landscape paintings and yeah keep and explore different books as well like Twilight and The Hunger Games so I've got a very long list of things I want to do. Since, no, since learning that four edge painting is a critically endangered craft, because there's certain criteria for, for which a craft becomes endangered and especially critically endangered, when it's critically endangered, it means that it has no real chance of continuing, of being able to thrive uh, long term. And that means when there's, when there's uh, artists and creators who 
like there are so few left to pass it on and to teach um, and there are so few resources to to learn the craft independently that's when a craft dies and it's it's part of our artistic culture and it's something that's really unique to to um english artistic culture so it would be something that would be a real shame to for it to die so it's really important to me to keep it alive and also keep engaging with other forage painters which i wouldn't have found if i hadn't have looked at the heritage crafts list of forage painters this is uh this is the lord of the rings it's i normally buy my books second hand because i try and be as sustainable as possible plus they're often made better um so i've got like it's like a triptych um, if you're familiar with the Lord of the Rings, there's uh, an elf called Arwen, who's on this edge, and there's a man called Aragorn, and they're in love. Um, she gives up her immortality to be with him, and this is them on the middle edge, so I quite like them being symbolic as well, so it's, and then when you can sort of open the pages and it doesn't uh, So, so the, I mean, the two options that I kind of have with four edge painting is, and indeed with any art actually, is to either do it on a commission basis where someone will tell you what they want to paint, you to paint, and then you'll paint it for them. Often it can be something that's quite customised and personal to someone, or you can paint and whatever you want and then sell it. I, I do the second option. I paint kind of what I want and then sell it because it allows me to experiment a bit more and also it's things that are already personal to people because the Lord of the Rings and Harry Potter and books like that are already so meaningful to people it doesn't you know necessarily need an extra personal touch for it to already um, be something that they might want to buy so yeah also, but also I've made money through um, doing commissions for like film companies who want me to pay if they have a so Amazon Prime's Wheel of Time series uh, they, they made a new TV show and they got me to paint a load of Wheel of Time books, so yeah. It actually doesn't. I know the craft looks really overwhelming and it, it looks really complicated. And it is, you know, there definitely needs to be a bit of a trial and error with it and it's a bit difficult to get used to. But in regards to like how economic it is to start, it's so cheap because it's watercolour and watercolours can be so cheap. That I, got, I think I got a huge set I got this gigantic set here, which is loads of colors for like eight pounds. And these clamps down here, actually, I can't get them. Um, the clamps that I use uh, were about three pounds. I bought them on Amazon and there's just a plank of wood and you can buy secondhand books, which I often do. Um, so yeah, it's, it's very inexpensive craft to start. Um, it might be a bit tricky to get hang of clamping the books and stuff, but from a money point of view, it, it's, it's really not expensive, which is something I really like about it. So Martin, Martin Frost is uh, probably the most prevalent forage painter that we have at the time because he's been doing it for so long. He does hidden forage paintings. Um, he won an MBE for doing it as well, which is really cool. Um, but he, he does do in-person tutorials. Um, he does in-person workshops. Um, but he also has some YouTube videos up. Um, I myself have little tutorial uh, highlight reel on my Instagram, which you can, which I try and answer it as in depth as possible on how to start forage painting. But, you know, if you want to do hidden forage painting, I'd probably recommend doing an in-person workshop, but the kind of forage painting that I do where it's just on the flat side, um, you can just, you don't, you don't need to go to a workshop and learn how to do it. Uh, it's really just, it's quite straightforward. It's just getting used to it, which is the difficult part. 